Hello everybody, it's Murray here from M. Stuart Paintings and on today's acrylic painting tutorial I'm going to teach you how to paint this gorgeous waterfall landscape scene. I'm going to teach you how to use tones to create realism and create this gorgeous rainbow. So let's get into it. So on today's painting tutorial you're going to need the colours purple, blue, black, green, a bit of white, a tiny bit of yellow and a tiny bit of brown. You also need a hairdryer to dry your work in parts of the video. To make the rainbow it's just the classic rainbow colours of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple and to make indigo it's just blue and purple combined. So here is a burnt sienna coloured painting that I've just done on a canvas and I've used chalk to do an outline. We've got the waterfall in the middle, we're going to have the rainbow up top, we're going to have some sky and some clouds and I'm just going to generally teach you how to use colour to create realism. Don't worry if you haven't got a canvas, you can use paper, it's not a worry and you don't have to paint your canvas brown, I just find it easy to use chalk. And again with the colours, I'm going to show you the colours that are pre-mixed. I've got white here. To make this light blue, all you need to do is add a little bit of blue to lots of white. To make that purple, all you've got to do is do the same. You just add tons of white and a little bit of purple. To make this blue, all you need to do is do blue, white, black, and a tiny bit of purple actually to make that color. To make just normal purple, you've got purple. And to make a darker shade of purple, you just add a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of white and black. So you can use the core colors. We will use a tiny bit of yellow and a tiny bit of green later on. But all the colors you can just make from normal colors. So again, you don't have to buy anything expensive. You don't have to buy any expensive paints or anything. So to start, we're gonna take white and a tiny bit of blue and we're going to create a really light shade and we're just going to add blue in the corner to darken it up and all we're doing is just adding a bit of the purpley blue so all that is is purple white and blue and we're just going to create the illusion of a cloud so all i'm doing we're going to block it in it's going to look rough don't worry if your work looks scruffy mine's going to look incredibly scruffy but all we're trying to do is we're just trying to cover up that canvas and we're just trying to get everything in the right place so we know where everything is going to be so to make that lovely sort of shadowy blue all it is is blue a little bit of black a little bit of white and some purple you should get this lovely sort of saturated blue shade and the reason i'm going to teach you how to do everything in today's video is i'm going to try to teach you how to push things back into the distance by using this tone of blue and how to bring things forward by using things like black so all we've got is the same color and all we're going to do is we're going to add some blue and black to that mixture and as you can see look it's a lot darker so we're just blocking in our cliff tops and these are going to be our mountainous sort of rocky cliffs tops that the waterfall is breaking through so you can see it just from there we're just going to match the same in the opposite side so we're just going to have this black and blue area here and that's because this cliff is going to be closer to us so what that's already doing if you see when I move my chubby hand is basically it's bringing that side forward so by taking that pastel blue and just adding some white and blue we're just going to create the shadow tone of our waterfall and all that's going to be is all the sort of mist and wash that the waterfall sort of sparks out we don't want it white because we're going to add highlights over the top so we're going to put all the shadow tones on first and again don't worry if it's scruffy we just want to get everything covered so we've just got this nice basic outline of where everything's going to be and all I'm doing I'm just putting a little bit of water on my brush and I'm just matching everything I'm just blending that just area together so now if you just use a hairdryer and you just dry it we're just going to go over the top and all we're going to do is take some white and blue and this is going to be the lighter part of our sky and again it's just like normal if you have to do a layer or two don't worry it's just to um, fill in bits of your work so we're just adding blue into that corner so if you have to do multiple layers don't be scared to do that it's not a worry just take your time so my camera went a bit weird here I think it was on autofocus I have that or it's had a drink or two from the night before <laughs> it's got a bit cross-eyed so I don't know why it did that 
So again, look, if you have to do two or three layers, that's, that's no problem. You want to take your time and you want to get really, really happy with each stage. So look, all we're doing is we're just doing these X shapes with our brush, this big brush, and we're just blending in. Again, like all the videos, we're darkening up the corners because we want to draw the viewer's eyes right into that center of that um, lovely waterfall. And we're going to have our lovely rainbow once we finish. So this is easy and nice and dry and all I'm going to do is take some of that white and blue and I'm just going to go and create the illusion of clouds. So all I'm doing is just creating shapes and again you'll probably have to do a couple of layers just to sort of, you know, the, pr the problem with the lighter colours, the reason I paint my canvas burnt sienna is when you use these lighter tones they're very watery and they're very light in colour. So things like white and blue or things like white and purple, you can see the streaks in them. And if you'd done it on a white um, piece of paper or a white canvas, you wouldn't necessarily notice bits you haven't covered. So that's why I always paint my canvas brown. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just using that shadow tone that we've got, which is just blue, black, purple and white. And I'm just, just creating a strong edge so I know where the edge is just going down just blending it in as I say it's very scruffy for the time being so now I've got a dab of purple and lots and lots and lots of white and I'm just gonna create clouds so all I'm doing I'm just creating shapes of clouds I'm just blocking them in and what it's gonna be it's gonna be all the sort of mist and clouds cascading from the waterfall so all that sort of splash and shine but look, you can clearly see now, you need to give it sometimes a second or third layer. That's the thing with acrylics. Unlike oils, where oils are very thick in texture, acrylics, due to the water, are quite watery and they're quite see-through, as I say. So you get streak marks, you get marks in your work. So by just drying it with a hairdryer, just going over it a few times, dry it, go over it, dry it, go over it. It's a bit arduous, it's a bit boring. But if you do that, obviously these painting tutorials are very, very quick. So I'm painting something in an hour, which I would normally take six hours to do. So, so the, they're not very detailed. They're just really, really easy compositions. But you can take hours. You can do every stage and you can work on it by just drying it, going over it, drying it, going over it until you're absolutely happy with all your transitions, your detail, everything like that. So take your time. So just a mixture between the light blue and the light purple. And all it is, as I say, is lots and lots and lots of white and a dab of each colour. So a dab of purple or a dab of blue. And it's just to give the clouds, when we add highlights over the top, it's just to give it texture. So look, even the second coat still hasn't covered it. You can still see the marks. So look, I had to do a third coat. <laughs> as I say, sometimes you've got to do these things. But it's worth it in the long run because once you cover it up, you don't want, as I say, you don't want to get, if you're doing it sometimes on a white canvas, you don't want to get right to the end of your painting, stand back and you can notice these bits. So it's good to take your time and it's good to just take the time to cover it. As I say with art, it's, it's your work, you know, be happy with it. Don't move on till you're very happy with each stage. And what it does as well, when you add colour over the top and colour over the top, it makes it more prominent, it makes it look better, it look, makes it look crisper and brighter. So look, all I'm doing is I'm taking white and light blue, so I'm creating an off-white, it's not pure white, it's white and a little dab of blue, and we're just going to create some highlights on these clouds, and the reason I'm not doing it pure white is because we're going to have pure white later so all I'm doing is white and a little bit of blue and because we've got that lovely purple and we've got that lovely blue as acrylics died um, they dry not die <laughs> they dry darker um, everything dries darker what we're doing is we're just adding a white to that mixture we're just adding the highlights because we know that underpainting by leaving gaps is going to give the illusion of shadows and highlights so it's giving texture look just by doing that creating little gaps we're just creating all the floating bits all the marshmallow bits of our clouds and what it's doing is by leaving the underpainting underneath it's allowing to make shadows and to make your work look more texturized and more realistic so again I always step back I always have a look at my paint from afar 
So look, we're just gonna add some white over the top now. So this is just, just pure white on the top. And the thing with white, when you paint it with acrylics, a little bit of the underpainting will shine through. So it will always be a bit duller. So again, you might have to sometimes do a few coats, wait for it to dry and then go over it. It's all about finding your way. Later on everyone, I'm gonna start doing some oil paint um, guides because a lot of people are asking me to do some oil paints. I actually combine acrylics and oil paints like a lot of people are on YouTube. So I'm gonna start doing some videos, more detailed videos for everyone because everyone's asking in the future. So look, all I'm doing is just adding some highlights, just using white over the top. And as I say, sometimes you've got to do a few layers, but there's nothing to be scared of. And the reason these white bits are, when we add our rainbow, that's where all the light is coming through because the, the light is what the, um, the causes the colors to refract and create a rainbow with the, the um, water. So I'm just using my finger just to smear it. But you can see now, look, it's just giving the illusion of nice highlights, nice texture in my, my clouds. So I know a lot of people are struggling with clouds. I actually have a cloud tutorial if anyone wants to check that out. And as I say, you can always add a little bit of oils on top. This is an acrylic tutorial, but there's a cloud tutorial available in my painting tutorials playlist. And it shows you how to do realistic clouds just like this one. And you can always add a tiny bit of oils if you really, really want to make it more realistic. So look, that cloud, that sky looks really nice. So we're going to move on to the actual waterfall. So we're going to go back to that sort of saturated blue color. Now, if you look at things at a distance, they're not black they're actually blue that whatever color the sky is the background picks up that sort of color and it it turns it blue so what I'm doing I'm using this color which is blue white purple and a tiny bit of black and I'm just again leaving some gaps from the underpainting so look if we see here I'm just creating a really nice prominent ridge now we've got our lovely sky in and what that blue does is it puts it further back so all I'm doing is leaving gaps in the underpaint and, and all that is is this could be all the texture all the ridges and crevices in in the um, canyon in the, um, the rocks so by just leaving all these gaps we're creating texture but as you can clearly see now with that blue color that blue tone is pushing that waterfall back it's making it look that is further away and that black in the right hand corner is making that waterfall that 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 cliff look like it's nearer to the viewer so just by using tones just by using blues and a little bit of purple you can push something right back so all I'm doing I'm just blending that tone as I say I'm always standing up and I work from afar just trying to judge it so I'm going to get some green and I'm going to add blue to that mix because as I just said things in the distance it's more saturated they're very they're very blue they pick up the tone from the sky above so all I'm doing is I'm adding green and blue and I'm just doing the sort of cliff tops the sort of grass that grows on top of these cliff tops ours is going to be a tropical um, waterfall I think so this is going to be somewhere really pretty and it's got nice and green cliff tops really lush something like Moana <laughs> like, and all we're doing look just green and blue and we're just creating we're leaving gaps again in the underpainting to create texture to create ridges looks like crevices looks like um, texture looks like rocks and boulders so just keep adding layers upon layers as I said in the previous videos that it's just adding layers going over the top of them adding layers just adding texture making sure but if you if you always think you start at the darkest and work your way forward so we're going to put the shadows on first and then we're going to put all these highlights and textures and then we're going to put the highlights right on the top so look just creating all these textures it still looks very rough but don't worry we're going to get it all together so I'm going to take some brown, some blue, and lots and lots and lots of white to 
create a really nice saturated brown color, almost like a sand, like wet sand color, like a tan. And again, it's just where the light is hitting these ridges. Where the light hits the um, ridges, it just makes it a little bit brighter. So what I'm doing is just creating texture. And if you imagine the light is coming from the right hand side and it's just shining down onto this boulders and this ridges, it's coming over the, the waterfall and just shining down. Now we're going to take some black and we're going to add some blue to it. And we're just going to create a darker tone. So not jet black, we're going to put plenty blue. So if you just imagine black, blue and white, so you get a very musty dark grey. And again, we're just adding some texture. This is going to be the parts of the light that aren't getting much light. So it's parts of the boulders that are getting shadows. So we've got this nice contrast between the, the, the bright highlights and the dark areas. Now. I'm going to take some lighter green and I'm going to add some yellow to that and a little bit blue just to neutralize it just to make it further back as I was just saying to you and I'm just putting on the highlights so I'm just adding some highlights so we've got the green shadows and we're just adding a little bit of highlights on the top and again this is just the areas where the light is hitting that area and it's going to be more lush and it's going to be more brighter and to brighten it up all we do is just add a little bit more yellow so look to brighten it up just add a little bit more yellow and that will create more of a highlight so they can be the areas that get the most sunlight so if you just remember if you want to lighten something up just add things like yellows and oranges if you want to cool something down just add things like blues and purples and you can get a really great effect between hots and colds and lights and shadows. So look, just add in layers, just create this lush sort of tropical sort of waterfall. Now when you've done both sides and you're totally happy with it, you've got this nice texture, I want you to dry your work with a hairdryer before we move forward because I'm going to teach you a trick with acrylics that I use all the time. So this canvas is totally dry, I'm going to take a big brush that is totally dry and I'm going to get that nice blue colour and I'm going to put hardly any paint on my brush. I'm going to wipe the brush onto my t-shirt or some texture so I've got highly and I'm going to glaze my painting now by glazing it what I'm doing I'm putting a very very thin layer of that blue tone over all the detail we've just done now what that's going to do it's going to push the tone backwards it's going to push the waterfall and its texture backwards and it's going to make it look like it's further back it's going to make it look like it's in the distance but it's still going to allow a lot of that texture to shine through so it's going to create the look and the feel of ridges and detail but far away by just glazing over the top look I'm just using that tone I've got hardly any paint and my brush is totally dry I'm just glazing over the top of it and look it's just pushing it back it's making it look like a photo where it's looking it's far away now this one we're gonna do the opposite we're gonna bring it real forward so I'm gonna use just pure black jet black and I'm gonna again leave some of the underpainting shining through and that's gonna create the texture effect that we always do now this if you imagine this cliff top is real close to the viewer and it's almost like you're climbing over it to look at the waterfall so we want this cliff top to be very black so the, if you want anything near to you you want to have black if you want anything further away you want to use blue so this whole video is to show you how to push something back or to bring something forward towards the viewer. So look, you've got this real clear indicator of what's far away and what's close to you. But again, we're going to add detail over the top. So we've got this nice black thing. Try to dry it before you add color over the top. Otherwise, you will not get much nice color. You'll get a musty black tone because black kills all colors. So all we're doing again, we're just creating texture. We're just leaving bits, we're leaving gaps, and we're just going to create a tropical cliff top that's close to us, so close to the viewer. 
So all I'm doing is using different shades of green. As I say, you can just add yellow to brighten it up. Just add a little bit of blue to darken it down. So to add shadow, just add blue. To add highlights, just add a little bit of yellow. Now I'm going to do the exact same technique by glazing it, but just with a bit of black. So all I've got is a bit of black and green on my dry brush and I'm just glazing over the top and where I want the real prominent shadows I'm just going over the top with some black. So again I'm just trying to create the illusion of shadow. I'm just trying to get it to look like this shadow. So that glazing technique is fabulous. You can actually do that with oils but I find it works really really well with acrylics where you dry your canvas if you have some baby wipes handy because if you make a mistake you can just wipe it over the wipe it away but all you're doing is using a very dry clean brush and you're just glazing something so again look just by using jet black we're adding all these shadows and all this texture onto our nearest cliff top hey that looks so cool now all we're gonna do is we're gonna add some blue and some black together a little bit of white so we're going to create a really dark gray again and we're just going to put some more detail here because if you think of it like a horseshoe it's curling round towards the viewer so these far corners are going to be a little bit darker than the middle which is going to be a bit bluer so look you can see now it's really starting to trick your eye and you can do this with anything you can have things like fields in the background you can have anything houses if you just think if you want to push something back just add more blue to it and if you want to bring something forward add more black and make it more darker and you'll see it's just starting to all this texture now is starting to trick your eye it's starting to make it look more realistic and let's say this is a very very quick tutorial but you could do this for hours you could make it photo realistic that's what I do with all my really expensive work that goes into the galleries and places I spend hours doing this so this is just to teach all of you so look, I'm gonna get some pure white now and I'm gonna really start adding highlights now we're gonna add some detail and start finishing up this painting so we're going to do the water. So all I've got is some white and a tiny bit of blue, just a little bit of blue. And we're just going to create the look of the water cascading over the waterfall. So coming over that cliff top and coming down. So again, just like the texture, just using some light blue, we're leaving the underpainting, that dark bluey misty tone to create the illusion of mist and far away sort of all the sort of wash that sort of spray you get that lovely sort of spray from waterfalls and it's all misty so look we're just leaving gaps what that's doing is creating again shadows and texture so just come over over the top and just just keep working on it so look it's already starting to work it's already starting to look like the water is just coming over the top by leaving that underpainting it's just looking like it's creating all the sort of ripples and all the water coming over now all I'm doing is I'm just taking some jet white I'm just going over it remember what I said earlier when you paint over the top with white sometimes the texture of the paint below it so the blue and the sort of underpainting below it will still shine through so sometimes you have to do multiple layers so just like I was saying to you with the sky sometimes to get that real jet white you might have to do a few coats and that's fine with acrylics with oils you could just do one coat but with acrylics you probably have to do three or four so look that's looking really nice already We've got that highlight because that's where the lights come in that light is going to be hitting that top of that that waterfall I'm just using white and blue just to sh have a bit darker shades so these are the areas of water that are a bit more in the shade and all I'm doing now is using white and blue to create froth and this is all the water hitting the stationary water on the bottom and creating a real big sort of wash and sort of churn in the water there we go easy peasy 
Now what I'm going to do is take some blue and white, the same as the sky tone, and I'm just going to go around the edge of the waterfall because I just want a clear definition of where the waterfall sort of comes over, just so it makes it look a bit more natural to the eye. So please dry your painting again with the hairdryer and have some baby wipes just in case we make a mistake because we're going to do the rainbow now. So we've got the seven colours of the rainbow. We've got yellow, orange, purple, indigo, blue and red. And I'm just going to choose purple or a light purple. And I didn't have much water on my brush there so that's why we got this, that smudge. And all I've done is I've just used a baby wipe to just sort of spread it. Now with the rainbow, we want to not put too much paint because do you remember why I said to you acrylics always dry a bit darker? So if you can, try to put just a really thin layer of colour. So all I've got is purple and blue and I'll put the indigo in in a minute. But you normally have purple, indigo, blue, then green, green goes into yellow and then yellow goes into orange and then last but not least orange goes into red and you should get that lovely sort of rainbow effect easy way to think about it, if any of you is um, into things like meditation or anything it's the seven chakras that's the seven colors so if you think your root chakra is red and you go all the way to your enlightened um, crown chakra which is purple or if you just think that's the same colors of the rainbow so the seven colors so look once it dries it dries a little bit darker so if you have to give it another layer or so don't worry but again just like the glazing that we did earlier I'm going to show you a technique how to just make it look more realistic if it's nice and dry, like I say, you can always dry it. So look, that's that's a bit too bright. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take some white and a tiny bit of yellow, and I'm just gonna put the clouds back over the top and just make it, just like we did with the glazing, I've got very little paint on my brush and I've got a dry brush, and I'm just putting in the sky color and the clouds over the top. And just like we did with the um, texture on our, uh, on our cliff tops, I'm just doing the same over the top of my rainbow. Because I don't want my rainbow being super bright. I don't want it being so bright that it looks unrealistic. I want it to look like it's coming through the water. So all that color is there is just yellow and lots and lots and lots of white. And that's gonna be where our sun is. So the reason I'm using yellow and white is because we're going to put white over the top. So this is just going to be the brightest part of the sun shining through. Now I'm creating sunbeams. Now all I'm doing is taking a dry brush and I've got a drier canvas and I've got a flat headed brush. So I've got a totally flat headed brush and I'm just drawing lines. So again if you have some baby wipes, if you make a mistake, you can just wipe those lines off. But it's a really easy way to create the sort of sunbeam effects. So all I've got is yellow and white. And now I'm going to put pure white over the top. So I've just got jet white, titanium white, zinc white, whatever white you've got. And I'm just going over the top. And I'm just going to create it to make it look more brighter. So look, just going over the top. And what that's doing where you've got the light refracting and creating the rainbow with the moisture and the light, I'm just making it highlight. So look, there's a flat brush. Look, you just get some white paint and just go over the top. And again, I'm just going over it again just to make it more prominent, make it more brighter. If you have to do that a few times, as I say, you can just dry your work, just do it a few times. But that is looking really, really pretty already and it gives that effect of the light shimmering. Now all I'm doing, look, I'm just coming down just straight lines and I'm just rubbing the canvas and just letting it fade out. And all I'm doing now, I'm just going around because you get that kind of lens flare where the water, if you ever see a sprinkler or anything like that, it gives that sort of lens flare look. So all I'm doing is I'm just creating some detail around it with the white, just so it makes it look even more realistic. 
so cool what an easy effect and our rainbow is nice and pushed back because it's not too bright and again i'm just getting some white and i'm just putting some highlights where that that water is hitting the light now all you have to do is just sign it in the corner you might have to put a little bit more white just on this ridge and a little bit more white on your sun just to make it look more brighter but there you go it's all finished what an amazing gorgeous looking painting so here's my instagram if anyone wants to check out the original on my instagram and all my original paintings like this one you can check me out on instagram at mstrip paintings and then you have it you have a wonderful painting that look, took just over half an hour a gorgeous painting i've taught you how to push things back and how to bring things forward and we've got light and we've got color refracting awesome original painting so i hope you like it please like and subscribe and take care bye